So welcome everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about VMware and VPlex. So everyone heard of VMware? All right. Anyone heard of VPlex? Okay, oh good, excellent. Um, so we can do some amazing things with, with VMware natively to, to improve your availability. Um, but actually we can do even more things uh, and we can turn on even more kind of fundamental features if you like when we start combining these with a technology called VPlex that we have. Right? And when you start using both of these together, you really can put your top tier of mission critical applications onto this and enable, you know, tier one mission criti critical, you know, business continuance, okay? So, we'll start off just by uh, looking at four main VMware features, if you like. We're going to look at, you know, vMotion, everyone knows vMotion, where we can, you know, uh, vMotion a VM from one ESX server to another. DRS, this allows us to load balance, okay? over ESX servers. HA, this is where if we lose a, a physical server, we get automatic VM restart. And fault tolerance, where if we lose a physical server, there is no restart and there's no downtime, okay? So if you consider one data center, you have a, a shared storage volume, and you've got here two ESX servers in the cluster, both looking at the same data store. And here we've got the two VMs, okay? And this one here is, is in the HA cluster, so it's highly available. This second one is, is fault tolerance protected. And with fault tolerance, you get the primary VM, where all the I.O. goes, and the secondary VM, which runs on a secondary ESX server. And that secondary v VM keeps in lockstep. So it's running exactly the same CPU instructions over here as well. All right. So a couple of scenarios. With VMware, we can start literally picking up VMs and moving them to different physical machines within our data center. We all know, probably know about this. Some of the use cases there is what if I want to you know, load balance across all my physical servers? Or for instance, what if I want to take an outage of this server, a planned maintenance outage? I could vMotion the VM ahead of time and then take the outage and not incur any downtime. But what if I have a physical unplanned failure in, in my data center here? So what if I have a physical server failure? Well, this is where the HA and FT properties kick in. So here, if this physical ESX server dies, for whatever reason, let's say someone pulls the plug, your two VMs, VM1 and VM2, well, they're both going to cease to exist, right, because the power's gone out. Right? But for full tolerance, well, this is where the secondary VM simply kicks in, right, automatically, zero downtime, and there's no interruption to your service. Just, it just works, right? Whereas HA is going to do a restart. Again, th there is going to be an interruption as it restarts, but it's not going to be very big, and there's going to be no human intervention, okay? So these technologies are fantastic, right? But what happens if you lose your data center? You know, can, can any of these four products now help us? Well, no, not in this scenario, because they were within the data center, right? And actually, normally, what I'd now be looking at if I lost a data center is some kind of disaster recovery operation where I would choose to invoke disaster recovery, probably using something like Site Recovery Manager here, and that would be a business decision to invoke DR. And I would take my remote passive asset and I would make it active and start running my services there. Okay? So I want you to think for a minute. Those four technologies are fantastic. But what if I could use them over distance? Right? I could enable some really good new use cases, right, Some of, of great value to my tier one uh, infrastructure applications. Well now we can, and we can do that by introducing VPlex to the equation. We have a technology called VPlex Metro, right, and I'll, I'll go into a bit more detail in a minute. And that enables all of those features over distance. Now let's have a look at some of the use cases. Now with vMotioning over distance, rather than just move a VM within a data center, I can literally now move a VM over hundreds of miles. So now, what if I want to take a planned outage on my data center? What if I want to take my data center down? What if I want to move from one data center physically to another data center, building relocation? Right? What if I know something's going to happen to my data center, say, you know, Hurricane Sandy on the east coast of the America the other day, people knew hurricanes were coming, they could, you know, evacuate all of those VMs ahead of time uh, and not incur an outage if the worst happens, right? So you can see how that can help. DRS. You know, the trouble with disaster recovery solutions is those remote assets are passive. The only time you're going to use those remote assets is when you invoke disaster recovery. All the other time, those, you know, all that, that money you've tied up in those assets is sitting there waiting. It's like an insurance policy. But if I've got Active Active enabled via VPlex, I can now start load balancing automatically over data centers. Pretty cool stuff. 
And now, if you think about availability side of things, if I can now use HA over distance, which I now can do, well, what if I have a, a physical data center outage? You know, normally I'd have to invoke DR, but with HA over distance, there's no decision to be made. Simply, the HA cluster just restarts. And even better with fault tolerance, right, there is no restart. If you lose a data center, the remaining data center just picks up and there's no interruption. So zero recovery point objective and zero recovery time objective. So how does it work? Well, VPlex is, I guess, at the storage layer. So you start off with your physical storage. That can be any heterogeneous fiber channel block based array. Okay? Not just EMC. That connects to the back end of a VPlex. And the VPlex presents itself as a host to the storage arrays. And then we virtualize that and abstract those storage volumes and present to the physical host layer as a storage volume. Right, so we've abstracted and virtualized. Now this is completely transparent to these uh, ESX servers and they just see a data store. And we can go about building our clustering on top of that, which we've done here. But then what I can do is if I deploy what we call VPlex Metro, I would have a secondary VPlex instance in a remote data center up to synchronous distance away. And I would connect it over the IP or FC WAN, right? We do native eight gigabit FC or 10 gigabit ethernet as well. Uh, and then once I do that, I can literally take my block-based storage device and stretch it and distribute it in two locations at once. So it's simultaneously accessible in, in both locations. Once I've done that, again, it's completely transparent. So these ESX servers can literally be added into the same cluster. So now I've stretched my cluster without you know, any kind of integration. It, it, it just works out the gate. You're gonna need some kind of stretch layer two network. OTV can provide that or LISP can also you know, help in, in these sort of situations. But once you've done that, you can literally stretch your cluster and I can enable all of those use cases out the box. What is the distinction for time? What is the? The distinction for distance or time okay. between the So the question was, what, what, how, how far can we go? Okay, so I, I have got a slide on that, but typically we, for HA, we don't go beyond five milliseconds round trip. So I'll let you do the math. So I don't normally quote distance, but it could be 100, maybe even a bit further, right? Uh, the other thing we can do is we can stand up something called VPlex Witness. So what Witness does, it, it takes an active active storage cluster, VPlex, and it makes it into a continuously available active active storage cluster. This truly means that any site that we lose, you know, the remaining site stays online, but we need something in a third location to keep an eye on what's going on there, right? But there's no storage failover because it's active. So if you have two sites and you lose one, the remaining site simply stays online, okay? So just to give you some examples, you know, if I want to, if I know something's gonna to happen to my data center and I wanna move my VMs, all I ne now need to do with this scenario is literally perform a vMotion. But rather than select the local ESX servers, I select the remote ESX servers because they're all in the same cluster. And quite simply, the vMotion just works, right? No different to normal vMotion. It just takes those VMs and moves them out of the building, okay? Now, if I have a failure, or I choose to take a planned outage here now, I haven't interrupted my VMs, right? They're just running. My service remains uninterrupted. The second example here, and again, you know, you'd never be able to do this with disaster recovery, right, assets, but with you know, with an active-active situation, if I've got six, a six-node cluster here, and let's say all my physical servers now are quite busy, well, with DR, I could never start load balancing over there, but with HA and active-active, if I just enable DRS, DRS is simply gonna start load balancing across distance, across both data centers. So it's a bit like taking two physical data centers and making one logical data center into a big, you know, pool of capacity and storage uh, and uh, CPU resources. The other scenario is, what if I have a site failure now? Well, if I have a site failure, you know, much the same as when I had an ESX failure, my VMs are, are gonna die, right? If they're running in that site, they're gonna, they're gonna go down. But because it's a HA cluster, you know, the, the VPlex simply keeps a copy of data online over there, no failover, it's already active. And quite simply, the cluster just restarts the VMs, right? No human in, in, you know, intervention, it just happens. And the final one, you know, fault tolerance. So now I've got my primary VMs on one site, but my secondaries are now in the remote site. So now if I have a failure here, again, these VMs, well, the primary instance is gonna die, but 
immediately the secondary instance is just going to take over. Right? There's going to be no interruption whatsoever. So this will probably answer your question a bit more. You know, what can you do at what distance? And that, actually, it, it depends, right? So if you're looking at like, up to one millisecond of latency, we support all of the above. You can do fault tolerance, HA, FT, DRS. If you're pushing out to five milliseconds, which is typical synchronous distance, right? You're looking at, you know, no FT, right? But HA, DRS, V motion. And if you're going up to 10 milliseconds, we support the you know, downtime avoidance use case and V-Motion and DRS, but we don't allow to turn on HA at this distance, okay? But if you go beyond these types of distances, then you can still use VPlex with a technology called Recover Point and use Site Recovery Manager. And Site Recovery Manager can be used when you haven't got a Layer 2 network or, or LISP or something like that, okay? So, I've spoken a lot about uh, you know, VMware today on VPlex, but actually VPlex isn't just for VMware, it's for pretty much every cluster out there, and every cluster that's shown here simply works out of the box. You can take the, you know, the cluster application and deploy it, even on the bare metal, even without VMware, and have this you know, distributed HA. In fact, if you take Oracle Rack, Oracle Rack is you know, continuously available, active, active host cluster. I can now, uh, and Oracle certifies this, put that on the VPlex Metro. So Oracle Rack now runs in both locations simultaneously. So again, if I lose a data center, there's no interruption. Oracle Rack is already running in, in the remaining site. But again, I can use you know, Hyper-V, Windows 2008, etc., etc. I'm going to skip this because we did a presentation on this yesterday, a breakout session. But uh, other than that, I'll uh, take some questions. Any questions? Yes, question. Is there, is there any scenario where you can have a split brain okay. uh, issue between those HA sites? Okay, so the question was, is there any scenario where you can have a split brain between those sites? So, it's a good question. So with an active passive replication solution, you know, you've, you've got this side is active, I've got the mic, and this side is passive. If I have a, a WAM partition, right, I need to do nothing because this one's passive, this one's active and I'm not going to call split brain. But with active active, if I have a WAM partition, you know, the worst thing I can do is nothing in this situation and leave both of them active. So with VPlex, what you do ahead of time, you define what we call a failure rule. So in a WAM partition, you, you say before ahead of time, which one's going to win and which one's going to lose. So let's just say, in this case, I say this side wins, this side loses. If I have a WAM partition, it will actively suspend one of the sites, the losing site, okay? The reason why we need witness is because, let's just say ahead of time I set that to be the winner and I lose that site, I now need to know the difference between a WAN failure and a site failure. So witness basically overrides the rule and says keep this site online. So we know the difference, so absolutely not, you can't get into a situation for split brain.